gonna sing no sad song. I'm not gonna walk around depressed like I've been defeated because we are not defeated people of God. Come on, if you know that you're not defeated, let that devil know that we win. Let them your hands up. We are not It is a devil that would like to make you feel defeated. That's right. To make you feel like all hope is gone. It is the enemy himself that puts fear. Because every time God shows up, I never be afraid. That's right. I'm never afraid. But when God shows up, I have joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. But when the devil shows up, he starts making you feel bad and like it's the end of this thing. And he starts making you feel like there's no hope. And he starts making you feel like that he's going to take you out. He'll make you feel like all hope is lost. And he'll make you afraid when you go into hiding. But the devil is a liar. here to New Life Tabernacle here in the Glade area. We are the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. God has put this church here that souls will hear what they are to do to be saved. I know you have many people that mean well, known as I said, they mean well, but they will tell you to be saved, you need to just confess the Lord into your heart as your personal savior right. and that is not truth you can confess all you want to but the bible says that they repented and they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus for the remission of their sins and they received the gift of the holy ghost this is why we tell you take the time that god has given you right now because if you're going to be bible saved you got to do it the way
And so we thank God for you being here this morning. We want you to come back tonight. We do have service at 6.30. I say to you, please come on back and tune in and watch, pull into the drive up service and hear the word of the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to get you off now. Frustration may come, but God still is in control. In Jesus' name. So we continue to pray for all of those families that have been afflicted by the COVID-19. I pray for those that have lost loved ones. And I pray for those that are ill right now. That God will lay his, lay his hand upon you and your family. But understand that God is a sovereign God. He has all things in his hands. And he's still on the throne in control. And so this morning I'm not going to hold you long. With the word of the Lord that the Lord has given. I want you to help me sir this morning. To read these scriptures. So that they can see it. We welcome all of you that are watching live by social media. I pray to you don't turn. Don't go to something else. Don't flip through the fall or slide through it. But I'm saying to you, listen to what God is trying to say to you. Amen. Pay attention, because right now is when the enemy will begin to text you or tell you something or talk to you. But tell them you just have to wait, because I've got to hear this word. That's right, that's right. And so this morning I'm coming from a different angle that you will understand by the time we get to the end. I'm looking at John chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. St. John chapter 15, verse 13 to 15. And notice what the word of God says. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, or ye are my friends, or you are my friends. If ye do watch whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. He said, I have called you friends. For all things, sir, all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. So this morning, my subject and what the Lord laid on my heart, listen very closely. The title of this message, the subject of this message, it is, which friend are you? It's in a question form. Listen very closely. The title of this message it is Which Friend Are You? I want you to ask yourself that. Which friend am I? If my subtitle will help me, it will say something like this. The real you will show up when adversity comes. The real you will show up when adversity comes. So which friend are you? Are you that gossiper? Are you the one that talks about God? And when opposition shows up, God goes out of the window. Are you that friend that say we're cool today, but tomorrow I don't know you? Are you that friend that when situations starts to happen in your own household or with your family, that you begin to look like a different friend? When somebody or you lose a loved one in your family or something is happening with your children, Something is happening in your marriage. Something is happening with your health. Which friend are you? So let us pray. Let us ask 
God, to help us to receive this message. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness toward us. Father, your truth is everlasting. Father, we thank you for truth. We thank you for your mercy. Lord God, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Father, even the things we don't know that you've done, but thank you for allowing us to see another day. Father, we pray for the families that have been struck with sickness and illness. Father, you are a sovereign God, for you have all answers, and I will not question you because you know all things. I just pray, God, that you will help us, Lord God. Help us here in the Glade area. Help me, oh God, that we can save other souls before it's too late. Whether we live or die, I'm asking God that you will save souls, that they will not die, God, in sin. That the backslider will come home. That the Luke saint, lukewarm saint, will get on fire for God once again. We love you, God. We can't protect ourselves. Only you can. Talk to us today about being a friend. Talk to us today about what you want to do for your friends. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Clap your hands one more time. Shout out unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Which friend are you? Which friend are you? There is an older song that we used to sing and some of us still do. And some of the older saints know the song. And the beginning of the lyrics of the song says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. This song is letting you know that no matter the situation or the problem, you can take it to the Lord in prayer. No matter what your family is dealing with, you can take it to God in prayer. And what is prayer? It is an opportunity to communicate and talk to God. But not just only for you to talk. Sometimes we talk too much. But it's an opportunity for God to talk to you. To give you direction. And to tell you what he requires. And tell you what he is doing if he will. So it's an opportunity to take it to the Lord in prayer. Instead of getting on the phone and texting and saying to everybody, this is what's going on and this is what's happening. I'm trying to share this fear in everybody else. Why don't you instead of talking, instead of texting, take it to the Lord in prayer and talk to God and get direction. Don't be afraid, but turn to God and say, God, whatever know the reason being is because the Lord Jesus is the only one that can truly truly that you can truly count on he is this way the Bible says he's a friend understand how Solomon spoke of it in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 notice what he said when he said a man that had friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. And I tell you today, that friend is Jesus. He is the one that's sticking closer than a brother. He is the one that I can count on. And he is the one that I talk to when I can't talk to anybody else. He is the one that I lean on when I don't have strength to go on. He is my helper. He is my sustainer. Jesus is my friend. How many have a friend in Jesus? How many still trust in your friend? He is my friend. And 
in a world, in this world of uncertainty, this world of disappointment, everybody is uncertain about what's happening. You don't know if you believe the doctors, you don't know if you believe the scientists, you don't know if you believe the government, and you don't know if you believe your family. But everybody got a suggestion. Everybody became a doctor. Somebody say that they know things that's happening. Somebody is walking around acting like they're scientists. Somebody walking around like God talked to them. But understand, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, then God ain't said nothing to you. And if your trust is not in what is written, then you just talk. But I got a friend in Jesus who lets me know what's happening, who talks to me in prayer, and talks to me through the word of God. But understand, I get faith when I hear the word of God. Understand, when Moses talked to the children of Israel, he's talking to us today. When he talked to us in Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6, he says to us, I'm going to say to you, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. What is them? Those things that come against you. For the Lord thy God, he is, he it is, that do it go with thee. He's the one that goeth with you. He will not fall or fail thee, nor forsake thee. That's the type of friend that I have. That's the type of God that I have. That he'll never leave me or forsake me. I know it may feel like God is not there, but child of God, he's on the inside of you. I just want you to tap into it. Instead of worry, instead of weeping, because I'll weep with you, and I'll rejoice with you. But at the end of the day, whether I'm a bound or a pace, whether I got it or I don't, whether death comes or it doesn't, I still got a friend in Jesus. I still got hope in Jesus. Lord, help me to preach it like I can. Help me to preach it like you want me to. In the name of Jesus, I'm glad to know I have a friend in Jesus who is God. Did you not know that Jesus is God? If you don't know Jesus is God. That's why you're struggling. And that's why you're worried. Because Jesus is not the second person in the Trinity. And he's not just a man. But he is God and man. He is God manifested in the flesh. And his name is above every name. He's not just the son of God. But he is the father. And he is the son. And he is the Holy Ghost. And he is the spirit that lives in the church today. If you got the Holy Ghost, he lives in you. I just want you to tap into it right now. Real quick, open up your mouth and say, Jesus, you're still in control. Come on and declare that Jesus is still on the throne. Somebody open up your mouth, blow your heart, and say, God is still on the throne. So when it comes to this Jesus, he is my God. He is your God. Even if you don't believe in him, he's still the God of this universe. And everything was made by him and for him. In the name of Jesus, he made you too. This is why he says, let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. And because that created made you, we got to learn how to praise him when it looks good or when it doesn't look good at all. So the Jennifer, we got to learn how to praise him. Whether I'm sick or got my health. Whether I see friends passing away. Brothers, I'm so sad in my heart. Passing away. But I got to think of what God put me here for. It was to preach the word of God. That whether you live today or die tomorrow. That you die in the faith. That you die in the faith. Jesus. And if you got it, somebody say amen. He is my Lord, which means Jesus is my master. My master tells me what to do. My master is what tells me. Not my wisdom and not my thoughts. Not what I think and not what CNN tells me. Not what the social media says and definitely not what the false prophet says. But it's what Jesus says, which is 
my master. But he's also, he's also a true friend and who I trust and obey. He is my friend and who I trust and obey. And so our subject is, which friend are you? I want to know, God says, he's asked me the question. He said, son of man, which friend are you? Because the Bible talks to us this morning about these two friends, these two friends of the Lord. The Bible is going to talk to us about these two friends that are friends of the Lord Jesus. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. The Bible is going to talk to us about two friends, mother, and he wants to know which friend are you. He's going to talk to us about these two friends that he knew in the name of Jesus. Two friends that one was in the Old Testament and one was in the New Testament. He wants to know which friend are you. He wants to know, are you this friend from the New Testament or this friend from the Old Testament? He's about to talk to us and he wants to know, I'm asking again. You say, why you keep saying it over? Understand, I'm not crazy, but I want to ask you this, brother. Which friend are you in the name of Jesus? And this lesson will show you what kind of friend you are to the Lord. What kind of friend you are to the Lord. So first things first. Let me give you a definition, maybe a Webster definition of what a friend is so that you would understand. A person who one knows and with whom one has a bond with or trust in. What is a friend, Pastor Garvin? Well, let me tell you what Webster says because everybody is scientific and educational today. Instead of being Bible, they're scientific and educational today. But as soon as I look at the TV, the weatherman says this, but God can say something else. That's right. That's right. Tell you, don't try to get caught up in what they say. They don't know everything in Jesus' name. And so hear what I'm trying to tell you. We're getting caught up with this world. Understand when? When did our philanthropy and somebody that's a billionaire like somebody like Microsoft, Bill Gates can tell you about medicine. Come on, people. Come on. God is a setup. I tell you the truth. When they come out with this medicine or with this vaccine, you can take it if you want. You can try to take it if you want. But understand, that devil knows what he's doing. He's going to try to make it mandatory. I'm not saying it's the mark of the beast, but I'm telling you everything is lining up. If you hear what I'm saying, and I'm just trying to be that preacher to get you ready if you hear what I'm saying. And so God is asking, what kind of friend you are? We're going to find out a friend, a person who one knows, understand, know, and with whom one has a bond or trust with. We need to know because this world has many different types of friends. This world has many different types of friends today. And some of you watching live and in this parking lot hey. got some of these friends I'm about to talk about. You got Facebook Jesus. friends. I wonder, you got 5,000 of them. But I wonder really who will have your back. I wonder who will tell you the truth. You got a whole bunch of friends. You got a whole bunch of friends on Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok. You got a whole bunch of friends on Facebook. How many friends you got? You think you special because you got 5,000 followers. You ain't special. You're just a showcase. If you're hearing what I'm saying. You know what I'm talking about, people of God. Social media friends. Young people, you got high school friends. And old people, you got high school friends that's trying to get connected to you again. I wonder why. Young lady, I wonder why Craig is trying to reach you right now. I wonder why Pookie is trying to get a hold of you today. I wonder, brothers, why the slim one that ain't slim like she was in high school trying to get a hold of you today. The devil is a lie. I know you're mad. I don't care. You gotta keep moving in Jesus' name. I wonder why we got friends with benefits. Whether it's benefits over in the bed or benefits because they like to help you because they looking for some type of relationship later. Understand you got benefits. Friends that are looking for relationships. They are friends with benefits. The devil is a lie. I don't need no benefit from 
you. It's my benefit. It's my help. I don't need your house. You call your money. I don't need your phone call. If you don't want to call, I talk to Jesus every day. Because he is my friend. In the name of Jesus Christ. We got acquaintances. You say, that's not really my friend. That's my acquaintance. That's my colleague. You know how you say it. You hear what I'm saying, sis? Listen very closely. Because you're about to get a friend today. And his name is Jesus. Oh, glory to God. All of these. All of these things that we call friends. They're very shallow. Shallow and have no depth in them. There is no trust in them. No loyalty in them. No true relationship with them. But I have learned that there is a type of relationship or friendship we have with the Lord. I'm talking about the true believers. Those who have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep saying that because you've got a lot of religious people acting like they're friends with Jesus. Uh -uh, you're just an acquaintance. You're just a colleague. He knows you from the side. But understand when I talk about this friend. There is trust in Jesus. What does that mean? When you are not friends with Jesus or when you don't know Jesus the way that you should know him, then there is no trust in him. Even though the scriptures say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. He's not your friend because you really don't trust him like that. He's not your friend because you lean to your own understanding. There is no depth to your relationship with him. You claiming Jesus is your friend, but there is no depth to your relationship with him, which means there is no prayer life. You don't have a prayer life. You don't really study or meditate on the word of God like you should. Thank you, friend. Somebody blew their horn. Understood what I was talking about. There is no depth to your relationship with God. You are rather listen to social media or the news, but instead of having a prayer life, there is no trust or loyalty to him. So you're really not his friend. Because new people have always come up in your life, but showed up and start to take your attention from him. So he's not really your friend. He's not really your best friend. Because every time she calls, and every time he calls, you always pay attention to them. But I wonder if God is trying to call you to prayer, if God is trying to call you to a better relationship, why do you Continue to do your sad thing with your other friend. Because Jesus is really not your friend. You say you trust today. You say you believe today. You say you pray today. But tomorrow you're scared. Tomorrow you're afraid. Tomorrow you're looking at the news. And the scientist is giving you your direction. The devil is alive. Jesus is my direction. And Jesus is my counsel. Jesus is my friend. And Jesus is my friend in the name of Jesus. And there is no true relationship with you and Jesus. Which means we have people that do a lot of talking about Jesus. This is where the religious world come in. The world will say trust in the Lord. The world will say my trust is in God. The world will say I preach in Jesus. The world will try to pray in Jesus' name. The world will try to do this in Jesus' name. And prophesy in Jesus' name. The world will say trust in the Lord. Uh -huh. The world will try to tell you to do this. And you got some false religious saints that will act like they trust God. Uh -huh. They will walk around and speak in tongues. Uh -huh. And they will act like they came out of prayer uh -huh. and warfare with God. Uh -huh. But understand, uh -huh. as soon as they leave that prayer, uh -huh. they doing something else. Hey. They're wondering, I don't know about this. Oh, I don't know about this. Oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Yeah, I hear you, Pastor. Uh -huh. But it's crazy out here. Don't hear me, hear God In the name of Jesus Trust God But I understand Because this is why the scripture tells us How the Lord will respond to those Those that act like they trust God Those that prophesy Or minister Or pray Or prophesy Or that lay hands on the sick Those that talk about Jesus You sing about Jesus Notice what the Bible is going to say In Matthew chapter 7, sir, and verse 21 to 23. I want you to read it. And read it good, sir. In the name of Jesus. Now that Go ahead, one sir. That said unto me, Lord, Lord, I'll uh -huh. enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that said what? Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And what does God want us to do? Wait a minute. God wants us to trust him. God wants us to have faith in him. He that doeth the will of his 
Father. He that do what God says, we are to trust him. Let me say that one more time because I don't think that you got it. The ones that act like they're religious, they say, Lord, 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 and God, 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 and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The ones that jerk, the ones that jerk, the ones that scream, the ones that shout, the ones that say this, the ones that the one that claimed they got a relationship. Notice, read it again. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Not everyone, say it, sir. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But he that doeth the will of my Father who is sir. in heaven. Many will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Uh -huh. And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name the wonderful works. Yes, sir. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. I never what? 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 I never knew you. This is the part for me that work iniquity. When he says, I never knew you, what he says is you and I never had a relationship. You stop trusting me. You stop having faith. You stop believing me. You got to give God the glory. No matter what it looks like. What type of friend are you? Are you losing your friendship? Do you have a friend in Jesus? In the name of Jesus Christ. But the people that have repented. And have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And received the gift of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And watch this because it's not done. And living a holy, consistent life. Which means you live holy. You are faithful no matter what. You are loyal no matter what. Even if you're going into desperate or situations. Father, son will tell me, why don't you lock everything down and go home? Because everything is falling apart. Why do you still teach Bible studies? And why do you still declare the word of the Lord? Because my life does not belong to me. My life truly belongs to him. So I'm going to stay faithful and loyal. I'm going to stay faithful and loyal. And they will say, you have other motives. Understand, I don't have other motives. But those that are not consistent with their life, they're not holy. They're not faithful. They're not loyal. And they have other motives. These other friends are those that have other motives. Have you ever met a friend that got another motive that claimed that they're your friend? They got other motives. You trust in him even when it doesn't make sense to others. That's how I want to be. I want to trust in Jesus even when it doesn't make sense. I don't want to have my own motive, God. I want to be faithful and holy. And so it's more like this, people of God. You ever been around those? I have. We ever been around people? And I know they mean well. Don't think that I'm talking about you. But if the shoe fit, put it on, Cinderella. You've been around those that say, we are to trust in God. But in the next breath, they tell you, listen, we got to trust in God, but use wisdom. We got to trust in God, but use wisdom. I understand what they are thinking they say, but understand my wisdom is not God's wisdom. And my thoughts are not his thoughts. And my ways are not his ways. So when you say use wisdom, my question is, which wisdom are you using? Are you using man-made wisdom? Are you using your wisdom? Or are you using the wisdom that God says from the word of God? And he tells us to trust in him. He said trust in him with all your heart. That means that there's a little shakiness in your trust. You got to grab that and say, Lord, I've been holding on this little thing, thinking I got a little wisdom. But let me get that back to you. Because you are the author and the finisher of my faith. You know the beginning from the end. So when I live now or die later, you are the sovereign God.
God. So I'm still going to trust in you. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. I know this message may not be what you wanted to hear, but I come to tell you, I am a friend to him. He is a friend to me, and I'm going to trust your God. I may not know everything that you're doing, and I may not have answers to everything, but all I know is that you're my friend, and you never let me astray in the name of Jesus. But understand, and this is why the Lord, he placed this message on my heart so that I can present it to you regarding these two friends of the Lord. But one was a true friend, and one was a real friend, and one obeyed him, and one trusted him unto death, if you're hearing what I'm saying. But one showed up who they really were when things began to happen. God already knew what type of friend he was. It just took a little time for it to come out. And I come to tell you, this is what's happening on the earth today. It's just going to take us a little time to find out maybe what type of friend you are. It's going to take us a time to find out how loyal you are and how much trust you have in him. How much loyalty do you have in him? Mother, how much trust do you have in him? It's going to take us a little while maybe. But believe me, God already knows. God knows if you're loyal. God knows if you're trusting. God knows if you're believing on him. God knows, God knows, God knows. And so I got to ask you this question one more time. Which friend are you in the Lord? Which friend are you? I want you to ask your neighbor that got somebody in your car. Just look at them. Or keep looking straight so you don't breathe on them. And just say, which friend are you? In the name of Jesus. Which friend are you, sister? Minor, I want to know which friend are you, brother Chris? I would like to know, sister Shirley. What friend are you? Come on, sister Adriana. Which friend are you? I'm asking you, mother Corinthian. Which friend are you? You're looking nice in Jesus' name. Come on, sister Chuck. Which friend are you in the name of Jesus? I want to know which friend are you. I want to know which friend are you. Come on, brother Roger. Which friend are you? Tell Jennifer. Which friend? Are you? Which friend are you, sis? All my brothers and sisters, my twin brothers. Which friend are you? Thank you for coming to the service in the name of Jesus. Which friend are you, sis? We want to know. So look at these points before we go home. We're going to find out, Brother Keith, which friend we are in the name of Jesus. So hear this right here in Jesus' name. The first point is this. So help me, God. Lord, touch me, God, so I can give it in the name of Jesus. I just just had to say that prayer before I go forth in Jesus name yeah. and so number one are you the friend of faith and trust that is the question I'm asking you right now are you the friend of faith and trust the friend of faith and trust from the scripture is a man by the name of Abraham the person that trusts God and got faith in God even unto death is that man by the name of Abraham Abraham trusted God. Abraham, you know that he trusted God. You know that he trusted God. He was in a position that he didn't know how this was going to happen. How he was going to be a father of many nations right. because he was so old and stricken. Right. He didn't understand it and he didn't know how. He was a friend that trusted God even unto death. That when God told him, sacrifice your son Isaac, kill your son for me, we understand and he put Isaac and he put them on the altar and he lifted up that knife and he was going to kill Isaac. He trusted God even unto death. Are you that type of friend? I wonder today. And so scripture says Abraham was right with God. Notice, not wrong, not halfway, but he was right with God and he believed God. He obeyed God. If you're hearing what I'm saying, the book says in James, read it fast, sir, James chapter 2, verse 21 to 23. Make it simple. Go ahead, sir. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham uh -huh. was shown to be right with God by yes, his sir. actions when he offered us his, his son Isaac on the altar? Yes, sir. You see, his faith and his actions work together. Yes, sir. His actions made his faith complete. His actions, sir. Go ahead. And so it happened just as the scriptures say. Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous God because God. of what? Because of his faith. Because of his what? His faith. His what? His faith. Go ahead, sir. He was even called the friend of God. He was called what? The friend of God. The friend of God. So this morning I ask you this question. What friend are you?
are you? Do you trust God? Do you really obey God? Is your faith in Him or in Him alone? Or is it a divided faith? Is the faith in Him starting to diminish? If your faith is starting to diminish, Solomon tells us in Proverbs 24 and 10, if thou faith in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If your faith faints in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Your faith is small. I question if you are afraid of him. But how many can say you still trusted in God? Through the loss, through the loss, through the hardships, through the troubled times, I'm still having faith in God. Friend Jesus, and I haven't given up on the Lord. Which leads me to the second point. Are you the friend of self motives? Are you the sand that is friend that has your own motives? Are you the friend that has your own motive? Which means it looks like you are a friend, but you got another agenda in the background. The Bible speaks of another friend, and that friend was always around Jesus. That friend was always in the midst of what Jesus was doing in the beginning. He saw and experienced many miracles with Jesus. He appeared to have walked with Jesus and the other 11 disciples. He was a friend. Jesus called him a friend. I know you might have said, I think I know who you're talking about. And you said he wasn't no friend. Yes, he was. Because Jesus called him a friend. But I understand. But his friendship was found out. Who he really was was found out. Look at what the Bible tells us about this man by the name of Judas. This friend by the name of Judas. In Matthew 26 verse 47 to 50. Read it real loud, sir, about this friend. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came with him, and with a great multitude with swords and staves, from the chief priests and elders of the people. What did he do, sir? Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign. Which is Judas. Go ahead, sir. Whosoever I shall kiss, the same as he, hold him fast. Go ahead, sir. And so with he came to Jesus and said, Hell, master, and kissed him. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto him, Friend. Jesus said, What? Friend. Jesus said, What? Friend. Jesus said, What? Friend. Jesus said, What? Friend. What does he say, sir? Wherefore art thou come? Where you coming from, friend? And he greeted him. Hold on, sir. He greeted Jesus with a kiss. And that means it looks like he has a real relationship. And I come to find out, just because it looked like you real close upon Jesus, just because it looked like you've been walking with Jesus, just because you talk like you've been with Jesus, don't mean that you're a real friend. Jesus knew him as a friend, but Jesus showed him who he really was. So hear what he's trying to say. He says, wherefore art thou come? Read it, sir. Then came. Go ahead, sir. Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. So Jesus Judas, Judas, rather, was a friend that never truly believed. Judas was the friend that had his own agenda. Judas was the friend that was living a double life. Judas was the one that was lifting up his hand in church, but doing his thing behind bars, doing his thing out there. Judas was the one, I'm down with you, sir. Judas was the one that was saying, Lord, for God I live, and for God I die. Judas was the one that looked like a disciple or follower of or what we call today a Christian. Uh -huh. yeah. Judas is the one that looked like that. Yeah. Judas was the one that looked like he was with God, yeah. but really was not. Yeah. He had his own agenda. Uh -huh. He said to his family, if I can say, yeah. family, listen, yeah. I hear what Pastor is saying, yeah. but we going to do this. Yeah. But I understand I'm saying to you, yeah. follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah. But most importantly, yeah. have your own relationship yeah. with God yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Trust what Jesus says. Yeah. And How we can be in the world today And I'm talking today To the sinner we don't believe To the backslider we sell out And to the so-called saint Our faith lacks You tell other people You can tell other people To wear a mask And you can tell them to wash their hands And you can tell them to do this But I'm going to speak back to you I want you to trust God I want you to have faith in God And put your wisdom in God Don't try to come to me about your Don't try to tell another saint Yeah, I understand The devil is a lie the Devil, you trying to make us be fearful And you like that devil Just like it came with Simon the Peter Peter, when Jesus had to rebuke him And say, get thee behind me 
me, Satan. You try to keep me from doing the will of God. So understand that that devil can show up in a saint when their faith is lacking. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to continue to do what God called me to do. And to trust God. He is my friend. He is my help. He is my way to God. So I ask you again, which friend are you? Which bring me to the closing. The friend of Jesus is the one that has laid all things down at his feet. Jesus is the one that shows us what a real friend is. Look at John 15, verse 13 to 15. Notice what the Bible says. Greater love hath no man than this, uh -huh. that a man lay down his life for his friends. Yes, sir. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Understand, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That means you are willing to lay down your life and walk with him daily. That means give up your desires and right. what you want, how you feel you should have it. In the name of Jesus, verse 14, sir, go ahead. Ye are my friends, uh -huh. if ye do whatsoever I command. That means you are willing to do what he says to do so that you can be saved, repent, and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, sir, hear what it says. Henceforth I call you not servants. Yes, sir. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Yes, sir. But I have called you friends. Uh -huh. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Yes, sir. That means you're ready to let go of earthly things or your earthly wisdom so that you can share with you a heavenly or kingdom things. You're ready to share what God has to show you, which is heavenly or kingdom things, which brings me to closure. If you want to be a friend of Jesus, you've got to be born again. You've got to be born of the water and of the spirit. And you've got to live a holy life. You've got to trust him when it doesn't look good. Trust him when you're sick. Trust him when you got pain in your body. Begin to trust God no matter what. In the name of Jesus. So if you've never heard it before, read it one more time as we go home. In Acts chapter 2 verse 38 to 40. Read it real loud, sir. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto them, Yes, sir. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. For the promise is unto you and to your children and unto all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Yes, sir. And with many of the words did he testify and exhort. What did he say? Saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. So my question to you, before you pull off and go for those that are watching live, I want to know what God wants to know. What type of friend are you? Are you the friend that will trust and obey and have faith through adversity? Or are you the friend that have your own agenda, your own motives, and you're leaning to your own wisdom or the wisdom of this world? I am that friend that will trust him even when it doesn't look favorable, even when it looks hard, and when everybody else let go. I want to be the one he calls his servant, his son, his friend. And so I say to you today, if you want to be saved, come and be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you are a friend of God today, clap your hands unto God. Give God praise. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name.